surgeon here in Manhattan and uh, I'm pushing 50. John, talk to me about, well you, you do great plastic surgery, I will, will testify to that. Thanks. Talk to me about the average age women start coming into you for plastic surgery and what age you advise them to. Well that, that number has shifted significantly uh, over the last few years and part of that just parallels the trend in less invasive uh, procedures done at an earlier age to kind of prevent the aging process or influence it in some way as opposed to just you know turning back the clock. So the answer is whereas you know 10 years ago we would see patients for facelifts you know coming in no earlier than 60 uh, because they'd be trying to get the most out of the procedure. You know I, I'd say that discussion for someone with some facial uh, aging issues should be really more at 50. Because that discussion does not involve only a facelift these days. There are many other modalities, uh, laser liposuction of the jowls, certain injectables that can lift the cheeks, uh, excellent skin care and skin tightening. So this discussion, you know, uh, is much more appropriate to have with the 50-year-old patient these days than the 60-year-old patient. What can you do for the 50-year-old patient who comes in here? Because most every woman has it and goes, oh, I hate my face. How can you help us? Uh, well, besides therapy, which this is in some ways, uh, you know, the first thing I, you know, I, I tell people is I think they are a little hard on themselves. I think that they, um, they, they tend to see things in the mirror that other people don't see, or they see them in photographs, which is a very static image, and we're dynamic, uh, dynamic culture, and so, uh, you know, I, I'm often kind of building them up a little bit before, you know, we start uh, filling them up. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we really go through a kind of uh, a menu of least invasive to more invasive options with the risks and benefits of all of those things. And it's remarkable how much there is to do now on that continuum before you get to the surgical part. Uh, and when you do get to the surgical part, how unbelievably that's changed in the past 20 years in terms of the amount of invasiveness and things like that. So. Uh, you know, the common things that we obviously, you know, we're talking about are uh, injectable fillers. And just, you know, a quick note on that, you know, when we started doing that, we started filling lines. Now we're thinking about volume, you know, what happens when we age? How do we reverse the aging process? So it's gotten much more sophisticated than just filling lines. What are the three biggest complaints 50-year-old women have about their face? Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, I would say, you know, and you could it's not even a complaint, they actually come in there holding the area. So, you know, they'll say, I, I hate my neck if they're neck people. They'll say, I hate my eyes if they're eye people. And, uh, you know, they start to see this little, they, they, they kind of make it ten times worse by going like this, you know, I tend, you know, I, I, the jowl. So, you know, you have the neck, the jowls, the eyes, and uh, it's kind of the eyes first in many patients because that can kind of start to happen in, at, at 40. And I like to kind of get on those things early because the earlier you catch something, uh, the more subtle the transformation, whether it's surgically or non-surgically. Uh, when, when you let something set into someone's face, they have a certain look about them, and now you have to kind of you know, change that look. And that's a kind of antiquated notion, I think, in plastic surgery. So uh, you know, we have the eyes, we have the jowls, we have the neck. And in, in almost each of those cases, I'd say in each of those cases, there is a non-invasive and a surgical option. So. Uh, it, you know, just because you turn 50 and you're grabbing your neck or your jowls or your eyes, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you need surgery, but it's a good time to start having that discussion. And the other thing I want to ask you is there are a lot of people who feel they want to do this, but it's a rich person's game. Uh, what do you have to say about that? You know, here here we are on you know Fifth Avenue and Sixty First Street. Uh, here we are, Fifth uh, Avenue Park. It's gonna snow. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, the answer is is that uh, when, when you know, seventeen years ago when I started, I think you know that was you know s the, the historical notion of this 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 was you know a, a field for you know for uh, for fancy doctors and you know and rich people. And I think the best thing that's happened over seventeen years is 
you know, it's become more like a regular medical practice in the sense that uh, you have people from every walk of life now uh, coming through these doors. Uh, you, you get very real and genuine people as opposed to what you would think of as, you know, a Hollywood plastic surgery kind of practice. You know, thank, thank goodness it's not that because, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time here and I get to know people very well and it's amazing how many are just very human about their universal want not to look older. And, and you know, I think that that also parallels the fact that there are less expensive, less invasive options now for patients. So someone coming in talking about, you know, uh, a saggy brow, you know, instead of only offering them a $10,000 operation, they have a possibly a $400 injection that could reverse that process very early in the game. So I think the, the, the playing field has kind of broadened, uh, you know, and I think uh, it's, 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 uh, I don't know if it's good or bad, I'm not judging it, it's just, uh, it's just something, there's a misconception that still lingers about plastic surgery uh, when it's really something that's accessible to, to many. What, when is it too late? When, when, when does someone walk through this door and you go, I'm sorry, I just can't give you what you want? It's never too late. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it's, people are, I find amazingly in New York at least, people are very clued into this kind of, you know, getting in here earlier. And again, uh, you know, if they could only come in for surgery, they might kind of not be coming in all the time. But since there are many other alternatives, we see people more frequently and we see them at an earlier age and we can kind of follow them and intervene and educate. Uh, but you do have patients who just, you know, come into the game in their 70s and 80s. And, you know, I have done facelifts and, and plastic surgery work and injections on, you know, patients in their mid-70s who are healthy with the most satisfying results of any of the surgery I do. Do I recommend waiting till you're 75? No. I mean, I think as good as you might feel and look at that age, there are things that probably could be addressed, you know, earlier in the, in the game. So 50 is pretty much a good place to start. So 50 is a great place to start if you haven't been, and if you are already, you know, uh, it's a reasonable, uh, you know, time to start thinking of these things. And even if it's to kind of have a little bit of a, a, a game plan, you know, you, you know, we do uh, retirement planning, you know, we can do kind of aesthetic planning, and uh, it's 50 is a great place to start. Then. Well, I happen to believe that in many areas 50 is not the new 30, but certainly in what you do, 50 can be the new 30. So, Dr. John Turk, um, we'll see you at your 50th birthday. <laughs> Thanks.